you join me with the cheapest new AMD build. This is the Biostar A10 in 8800. Um, it is a motherboard with a built-in AMD FX, so that's previous generation processor that you can buy new. So you're saving on motherboard and CPU. And you can also settle for very cheap RAM. So I was very curious about this as I have owned some of these Biostar boards before, like their Biostar series that featured an integrated VR processor. This is a very bare bones machine and you might watch other reviews of it um, saying that it's probably not the best um, bang for your buck and it's noisy. However, this is the version 6.1 which features an upgraded 6mm heatsink and fan which we will destroy later, sort of. Um, a rather attractive board for the money. Um, entry level M.2 SATA there and RAM and my old Antec ISK110 ITX case which I used for a long time with my AM1 rig as my main rig. Um, it's so small it doesn't even have a power supply integrated, you use a laptop power supply. Um, this I actually bought um, because I was curious and then after that I bought a Core 2 Dio 2.8 which runs at more or less the same speed as this machine just to see how they compare. Um, AMD recently paid out to FX customers because they did not have true cores. So in effect what they actually had is they would have the true cores except two integer units which share one floating point unit. And um, if you're a, um, an AMD fan you'd know way back in the K5 days they suffered from FPU performance and it seems like they sort of bought it upon themselves again. Um, specifically the benchmarks I will show later and there's only one, I'm not a benchmark channel, will illustrate that. But um, more on that later. This was a really nice build. Um, I enjoy tiny ITX machines, I've currently got an ITX Ryzen, um, which I enjoy very much. But um, this was a very easy build compared to some of the other builds you see that I stuff up until I started tinkering with it, that is. So all four screws, and it's only four screws on ITX, I think that's probably why I stick to ITX. And of course Biostar's lovely um, bumblebee yellow and black thing going there. And me proving yet again that the proper way to connect an ATX power connector is you flex the board until it touches the case, because then you know it's there. Um, this ADATA um, M.2 it um, impressed at the price. It was very cheap, but um, it had proper software supporting it. Um, I didn't get any firmware updates, but it, it worked just fine. It's not NVMe. It is SATA, but it does the job pretty well. So this is what we look like. Cheapest RAM I could find. This is DDR4 2400. However, since the FX began its life as a DDR3 machine, um, it says it does 1 or 2, 1, 3, 3 OC, which is OC for DDR3, which is not even on the chart for DDR4, so this RAM runs at 2133. So let's do an initial boot and see what happens. This is still running with the initial BIOS, so I need to update the BIOS to actually take uh, um, make use of the new bigger fan and cooler so there is a virus update in the pipeline and it's very loud at the way it now currently so I have sped this up and this is also one of the slowest BIOS chips I've had to update and I think it's only an 8 megabyte BIOS not 16 like the newer machines but yeah it was extremely slow so I sped it up I'm glad I didn't have a power failure in here. So, with regards to the cooling, um, they did upgrade it, but unfortunately they use a 10 millimeter fan, and the fan on the top you see there is 25 more. So I decided to change that, and I did change that to a fan, which you will see inside this case, but I thought I'd even improve on that and get a fan with more blades. 
And this is where everything went horribly wrong. That fan has nothing wrong with it. It does have five blades. It's got a small middle. This is the one I wanted to replace it with. More blades, but a thicker middle, which in the end made for a lot of noise. But that's unfortunately not the only problem I had. So I noticed some dust. I took it outside, cleaned it in a not very good fashion, but I mean, it did get clean. So the fan I had on it, um, didn't have pipes in which the screws went so you could use very short screws this one as you can see it's close you need to put a screw in at the top which I bought off eBay but their threads didn't match the threads on the heatsink and I just thought well I am going to force you to fit I mean you'll embed yourself and well this is what happens listen for the click There it is, and see how freely it spins. So the screw just broke off inside the heatsink, and I was just completely like, yeah, that's it, I'm gonna sell this. Scratch this project, this, this is trash. Can't, yeah, all hope is lost. Just, yeah, abandoned. But then, that was how I was going to end this video, and on the way home today, I thought, well, I'll try something I've tried on my bike before when I've messed up. Let's see if we can either make this a lot worse or a lot better. I am going to attempt to drill this out and it won't be pretty. And yes I am aware metal shavings are getting on this motherboard in between the heating fans and everywhere. I've only so far once drilled out something. This is my second attempt and it's a much more tricky task and I have to say um, I did poorly. Not only that, I also broke the first drill bit. Here we go. Nice job. Could have ended up a lot worse. But no, I will persist and screw up even more of this heatsink. You can already see the second turn there has got some anodizing taken off the top. Let me just see if I can get a screwdriver in there. Alright, so this is the mounting screws I'm using with the shorter fan. And I'm just literally going to force it in there. The angle is off. Um, I didn't get it. Um, top dead center, but close enough you can see there's a lot of chafing going on there, but I mean it now sits with four screws the way it used to before I screwed everything up trying a better fan Not the right fitting, but I mean it works Just push it all the way down So that's it guys. That's me um, Screwing around with AMD FX. I would recommend if you get one of these that you get a higher fan I would recommend that you don't take it too far the way I did um, just get a fan that's 25 mil high, it's not 10 mil high, um, and you'd have yourself a pretty decent new AMD machine. Not Ryzen, it's Ryzen 1, 2, or 3. No, this is FX. It does work after all that abuse, so all I can say is I'm pretty impressed. I'm glad I have it. I'm a huge fan of these cheap BioStar boards, um, and it's been an interesting build. Whether I will keep it or not, I can't say. It's a rather nice machine to have, very fast. Um, but with integer performance, as you can see here, it does not compete to Intel or even slower 2.6 GHz Intels. Um, that's around about what I spent on it. The case costs a lot more, but I guess it's 500 now. So, thanks for watching the video and um, be sure to check out the next one.